Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this session. My name is Luke Kuang, and I'm a director in the Global Solution Management Go-to-Market organization in SAP with a focus on enterprise information management. Joining me on this session is Tyler Warden, Vice President of Product Management at Synity. If you ask me, a move to S4 HANA is much like a Tour de France race. For those not aware, the Tour de France is the world's most prestigious and most difficult bicycle race. It involves multiple stages over many days and cover an incredible distance over some very challenging terrains. It is a team sport and not a 100% sprint event all the way, requiring support teams involved for planning, logistics, recovery, and so on. And the different stages of the race call for different strategy and equipment to tackle the challenges. So a move to S4 HANA is like this race because it is also not a sprint event. It requires a team or teams of people with different responsibilities. It involves different tools and it has different focus at different stages or legs of the journey. Which is why we are advocating that there be three stages in the move to SAP S4 HANA. The prepare stage gives you a clean start in order to jumpstart the migration. The migrate stage allows you to make a smooth move and speeding go live. And finally, the innovate stage ensures running optimally as well as ensuring the foundation is right for future SAP S4 HANA innovations. And which is why we're advocating a solution like SAP Advanced Data Migration for the move to SAP S4 HANA. At this point, let me stress that ADM is not the only tool or solution in your arsenal of tools for a move to SAP S4 HANA. But as you will see shortly, it is one solution that checks off all of the three stages that we just mentioned. So let me now hand over to Tyler to present to you SAP Advanced Data Migration by Synity. Hello and welcome to the SAP Advanced Data Migration Cloud Edition by Synity Overview. Uh, my name is Tyler Warden. I'm the VP of Product here at Synity. For the purpose of this video, I will be referred to in uh, SAP Advanced Data Migration Cloud Edition by Synity simply as ADM. I think the best way to frame up the video is that data migrations are an opportunity for an organization to really take a major step on their data journey. And in order for a data migration to be an effective part of that data journey it needs to be three things. One, it needs to be executed with confidence. Two, we need to engage all stakeholders from the business to IT to implementers to be sure that they get their knowledge and input into the solution and it sets the foundation for future innovation. And third, it's about getting back to running the business. When an organization goes to S4 or any part of the intelligent enterprise, they want to bring their business forward and we want to get them out of the IT project and back to running their business. There are eight steps in the migration we'll be covering off today that you see on this slide, starting from left to right, where we will prepare the migration, execute the extraction of both metadata and data, profiling that information, providing a target data design, mapping from legacy to that design, constructing and enriching data, transforming and validating, and finally loading. In our scenario today, we will be going from a heterogeneous landscape, in other words, more than one different legacy system, into the intelligent enterprise, S4, and Ariva and success factors. Now know that one of the benefits of, of ADM or advanced data migration is the ability to be source and target agnostic. In other words, from any legacy landscape to any or all parts of the intelligent enterprise. To start off with the demo, let's start with the prepare phase. And part of the prepare phase is understanding and visualizing information around the migration and how it's structured. Here you see our executive dashboard importantly showing that some parts of the migration are on track, some are behind plan but can catch up thanks to our predictive analytics telling the uh, project lead that yes they can in fact catch up and then what parts are overdue and then how we overlay that on top of the milestones of the overall program. A data migration track is just one part of an overall migration program in which case we need to align those project milestones with the key metric of a migration. In this example, we see our master data two sprint has a target design threshold between 80 and 90%, but when we scroll down, we can see we're at 75%. Now this is interesting because we likely need to drill in and see additional information. One of the key benefits of advanced data migration 
is the ability to migrate with confidence because you have real-time visibility into all the aspects of a migration with the KPIs, metrics, and best practices built in. As you see, we can go very deep into migration metrics and really drive into what, what information matters, who's on track, who's behind, and be able to execute project management from a very high executive level all the way down to individual source details. From here, we need to extract data and link that to the preparation. As you see here in this first uh, column of circles, these are what we call waves or major migration phases or go lives. When we drill into that, we get into the process areas or areas of business process that an organization talks about. You'll see in this example, Europe uses this language while North America uses a different set of language, and that's fine. As S4 migrations or any migration uh, moves forward, there are typically project plans or phases that roll through different departments, divisions, plants, groups, organizations may speak differently, and that's okay. Model that and reference that in the language of the business, of the people that you need to report into to make it understandable. Under these levels, we have data objects. And at this point, where we link business metadata to technical metadata as we drill into uh, tables and then down to individual fields. Now, this linkage here comes from our metadata discovery. Notice we have Z fields, both in the legacy and the target system linked in here. So we have metadata discovery and profiling to populate this, as well as best practice hierarchies within the solution. The best way to think about this uh, area of the product is left to right is tasking. There's ownership at each one of these levels within the platform for things like workflow, notification, and tracking. And the opposite of tasking is reporting. So the way we're able to look at our FI data in a particular milestone is on the particular status. The way we get these numbers is by rolling up from right to left the individual metrics, stats, and KPIs that happen along the way. Now, profiling happens both at a technical and a business level. Here, you have profiling line two data quality dimension. So how does the legacy data fit into an overall data quality picture? So in this case, in my legacy environment, I have data that relates to business partners. In this case, I've got 17 profiling checks across seven tables, 12 columns, 21,000 errors. I can drill in and see this information. So this profiling is both technical profiling in terms of percentage blank, min, max values, unique value lists, but also in terms of kind of this business focused profiling. For example, when I look at one of these checks, I can see here what my data looks like that's violating that checks in my language. I speak English. I'm not seeing technical names. I'm seeing friendly names. We are double byte. Uh, e enabled translate in any language so you engage with your users in your environment as it makes sense. After the profiling phase, we need to move on to design, and it's in the design area where we start to set and understand the specification where we are moving to. Without advanced data migration, you will be stuck using Excel, Office documents in an ungoverned process that adds time, risk, and lack of visibility to, to your program. So get out of that Excel uh, mess and into a auditable, collaborative, metadata-rich environment. In this case, we're gonna be talking about some material data. And in this material or product data, we're going to be coming from multiple legacy systems, a JDE, an IDES, a, uh, and other systems that are some are homegrown. Each of these systems have developers and business contacts just like you do in the target environment. So here we set who are you going to go and talk to for development, who is the system going to notify, and then who are those business contacts? Again, who's the system going to notify, and then start to set specification. The specification is, is very important. We can deliver best practice um, uh, uh, specifications and target designs working with things like model company and industry and line of business best practice. But we also give the ability to modify that and tweak that based on spec as well as what is configured in the target environment. In this case, there's 279 fields on my material general data. But in this case, if I filter this, you'll see there's only 37 active. So here I'm starting to make specification. 
And notice I have things like lookup tables, criticality. So if I edit this record and I said that this field is required by the business, maybe not technically required, but required by the business, that tells ADM to go and ensure that that check happens automatically. So one of the major areas of confidence and acceleration comes from auto generation. If I expand the automation panel here, you'll see all of these buttons are code building accelerators. So let the system build the rote and the mundane so you can focus on, on the meaningful and the important. If you think about all that the system now knows, this field is in scope, this is the lookup table, this is where it's coming from, well, it can auto-generate validations that the values are in that configuration area of T042L, that data is in fact required, that a rule needs to be put in place to check for that, and that it should likely automate remediation if needs to happen. Just by simply changing drop-down list, checking boxes, a very rich and robust proprietary automation engine runs to write repeatable, scalable code with built-in best practice. If target design is about the target, then mapping is about getting from the source to the target. Get out of Excel, get out of Word docs, get out of PDFs, and get into a live interactive auditable system. You see here that we need to move some uh, weight unit and we have a suggested mapping takes place. But maybe we need to modify that. Maybe we need to uh, update per a Z field coming from the requirements. At this level, we can document that there's a specification change. We can understand that that specification change came in. And as a pro program leader, as somebody working, say, a regulated environment, first, you see the full audit trail of every change made to that record. Secondly, you see the status updating. Now, notice this status update that we're in progress is also live reflecting at those executive dashboards. The real-time visibility drives a lot of confidence. It's not possible with other solutions. But also, we drive acceleration through context and workflow. Mapping is the biggest area of pain and slowdown typically on a project or program that does not have advanced data migration. Not only is there now a single source of truth, but there's also a rich workflow in that one user can submit this mapping, maybe a business user or a data steward, could submit the mapping to the migration team, in which case our workflow engine starts and provides that migration team the ability to then view, approve, reject, or complete these mappings. With this built-in workflow engine and notification system, you're able to really drive efficiency, letting the software do what software does best, orchestrate complex processes and data to drive an outcome. In this case, I'm gonna complete it, and now you'll see that this light will go green. Two green light means the mapping is done, the rule is built, the validation is built, it's registered in the system, all from a powerful, rich workflow process, again, driving live metrics and status that we're now one more field complete at a tracking level. After we do the mapping, we get into the execution. Now the execution is a rich, powerful robotic process automation style engine with a built-in best practice workflow. I'm not gonna press this button, but when I press it, it does your legacy extract, legacy facing transformation, harmonization to the target, target specific transformation and staging and generates hundreds and thousands of reports. One execution we call a simulation. Between a mock load, a go live, within a load cycle, the migration team will run hundreds or thousands of simulations because the software brings the cost of a simulation down near zero. And every simulation brings with it tracking and ability to assign sign-offs, preload sign-offs, post-load sign-offs to be sure you are compliant, but also have full visibility. When I look at all of the reports here from a migration leader perspective, I can see every simulation being run throughout the entire landscape uh, and have a single place to go view and report off that in information. These can then be assigned out to individual users and executed uh, for remediation and for data fixing and cleansing capabilities here. 
Advanced Data Migration comes with a patented low-code development system that allows rapid uh, distribution and creation of web forms. As part of the migration team, I take a form that's built for me, I right-click it, and I start to add, to add controls to it. To within minutes, I send a link to somebody in the business and I say, can you please go fix this data? They come in and run the exact same engine that runs under the migration today. It validates all of the data for them. They see the data validation checks and can fix them here in our rich interface or can download them to Excel and use Excel as their data entry mechanism, giving you all the benefits of Excel but after making those changes, the data is then saved and brought back into the migration system so that it can be validated. You can engage your business users while also providing a requirement for every migration, which is the ability to modify and enrich data without disrupting current business processes. Remember, all of that rolls up to all of the status and tracking capability. The final aspect to talk about is what happens after the migration is over. So we've used Transform to stage the data for load, and we have built-in integration to S4 and all of the load mechanisms provided by SAP. Full migration cockpit integration, RFCs, IDOCs, OData, SOAP, REST. Advanced data migration has full ubiquitous connectivity through the entire intelligent enterprise. But after that go live, how do you take all of that work done in a migration and unlock its value even further? Well, that's a concept in the product we call knowledge capture and reuse. When a wave is complete, our system uses a set of inbound and proprietary analytics to determine what rules and learnings are likely worth bringing forward post migration. So here are all the rules, findings, and knowledge that is of high value to the business post-migration. And we take that information, we automatically extract it out of our stewardship tier and load it into our knowledge tier. So even if somebody goes in, maybe they don't spell something right, they're looking for information on accounts receivable. I can go in and find a rule that came through during my migration. We learn about it during migration, but then we want to reuse this knowledge to accelerate an MDG implementation or data intelligence or SAP analytics cloud. By extracting technical metadata up to the business and letting the business understand and curate their rules, align them to business goals and categorize this knowledge in a searchable, consumable way, you take data migration out of not only something that drives the next generation of digital transformation, but also into something that accelerates every step along the way of the data journey. Thank you, Tyler, for that great presentation and demonstration. This brings us to the end of this session. But before you go, some quick commercial. Do you know that you can deepen and validate your learning and SAP solution skills by subscribing to SAP Learning Hub? So do take advantage of this exclusive offer. And with that, I thank you all for your time and attention, and I hope the information shared has been useful for you.